you are all set. All right. People coming in, I'll give a minute for people to come in. All right. Good evening, uh, Town of Hampstead. Uh, we are, um, tonight we will be uh, bringing in three candidates to uh, discuss um, questions and have uh, some discussions between the board members. Uh, but before we do, we'll get right into uh, reading the checklist of you know, ensuring um, compliance with the right to no laws during the state of emergency. So as chair of the Hampstead School Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic in accordance with the governor's, uh, oops, switched over, with the governor's uh, emergency order number 12 pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I'm confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone. We are utilizing Zoom for the electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously uh, during the meeting through this platform, and the public has access to listen to this meeting by dialing the following number, 888-475-4499 or 877-853-5257. Providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting, we previously gave notice to the public of this necessary information for accessing the meeting including how to access the meeting using Zoom telephonically. Uh, instructions have also been provided on the district website at hamsteadschools.net. We are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please email hmstechnology at, at hamsteadschools.net. Uh, we will be adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. All right, so let's start the meeting by taking the roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anybody in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. So Melissa, would you mind taking a roll call? Jason Giard. Here, I'm alone in the room. There are others in the house. Megan Malcolm. I'm here alone in the room as well as my house. Erin Pellegrini. Here uh, alone in the room, there are others in my house. And David Smith. I am here alone in the room with others in my house. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. All right, so we're gonna just give everybody an overview of what we're gonna do tonight and then we'll call in the three candidates. So we're, after we call in three candidates, uh, we will ask each candidate to uh, provide a, essentially read their letter of interest or any other information that they'd like to share as an opening statement. Uh, we will then move into a series of questions asked by each school board member. And we will ask for, um, we will give an order of what we're looking for, for who, which candidate to answer first, second, and third for each of those questions. At the end of those uh, series of questions, uh, we will allow each candidate to also leave a closing remark, at which time we will uh, move into a non-public to discuss amongst the four board members, uh, the three candidates, and we will uh, come out of that non-public and uh, vote on who we would like to be uh, joining us as the fourth, uh, as a fifth board member for the balance of this year uh, until the next election in March of 2022. So. Uh, with that, um, the three candidates, the three uh, members of our community who have submitted letters of interest were Megan Marley, Carl Hubner, and Caitlin Parnell. So, Mr. Flynn, would you mind bringing them in, please? All right. So... Caitlin, Megan, and Carl, you should be able to unmute yourself as well. All right, so um, welcome. Um, as you heard how we're gonna run this, so I'm gonna allow each of you to uh, provide a brief, um, you know, maybe your letter of interest or why you've uh, decided to put your name in for the fifth candidate, uh, fifth member of the board. 
we'll go into some questions after. And uh, like, like we said, we'll go into non-public, discuss, choose, come out, vote. And um, that member will be joining us uh, in a short term. So before we uh, jump into anything with letters of interest, et cetera, any questions from you, Carl, Megan, or Caitlin? No. Okay. Um, David, um, yes. I don't know if you were going to mention this, but do we want to um, make the point that the responses have a, a time frame? Yeah, we're looking uh, for no more than five minutes for um, you know why you submitted your letter of interest, and then uh, we're aiming for about a half hour to thirty-five, maybe forty minutes that we'll have dialogue about um, a few questions that we have, at which time we'll give you about two to three minutes each to for your closing remarks. Uh, so that's kind of the time frame we're aiming for. Um, but if we have some you know better discussions, good discussions, we may go a little bit longer. Um, so good point, Megan. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to ask letter of interest in uh, who submitted it first. So we're going to go Carl, then Megan, then Caitlin. Uh, so uh, we'll turn this over to uh, Carl. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is obviously Carl Hubner. Uh, so I grew up in Hampstead. Uh, I'm investing in the community. My mom's side of the family is actually been here for multiple generations. Uh, I went to Hampstead schools. Uh, I've been teaching for about 18 years as a general educator professional credit recovery instructor and now I'm a social studies teacher and I'm just finishing my doctorate of education uh, this year. I really got reinvested in the community uh, this past year watching school board meetings and then when I was working on the superintendent committee uh, I thought going to the schools with the candidates and meeting the different teachers in the schools was awesome. There's so much good energy there and they were so excited to talk to the candidates about all the cool things they were doing and I was like I really wanted to, to do something with that. Um, I also really want to apply what I'm doing, um, both my teaching experience with my doctoral work, but I don't really want to leave the classroom, but this is a way for me to do stuff at the district level and still teach at the same time. Uh, I also really want to work with the superintendent. I help pick them, so for me, it's about wanting to help him to succeed and do whatever uh, he needs to succeed. And I also have a lot of contacts and a lot of people from my program that were superintendents or former superintendents that can kind of give advice and, and answer some questions on that. And not just for like strategic planning, but there's also a thing called scenario planning. Um, so try to prepare for the next coronavirus issue. Uh, David was talking about on uh, the school board meeting about making sure that if we can't get back into school because of the renovation, what's our backup plan? And doing stuff like that. But I also really want to look at uh, previous work that the board's been doing. I went back and I started looking at old school board meetings. Um, and they were talking about uh, getting uh, foreign language in, into an early level into the schools as a goal of the school board. Uh, there was also a really cool moment. There was this girl, Maeve, who talked about how hot the 600s were. Um, and it was really cute and awesome. And like, that's like, that's what I want to do. I want to help kids like that to succeed, you know. And, um, put them in the best place to succeed. Uh, I know there's gonna be people that are like, oh, he's a teacher, you know, he's just gonna prove everything. But I'm also a teacher on a teacher's salary and I own a home that my dad built for us that I'm trying to keep. So I'm gonna to wanna to have effective spending in education. And that's really what my dissertation's on. It's about uh, effective spending in education. I really got into that dissertation because I knew that the state's never gonna agree on who wants to pay, but I wanted to try to put districts and school boards and uh, you know administration to give them the best information they could to do the best spending they could. So I want to try to take that and apply that in this district as well. Um, of course, the biggest question is going to be like, why didn't you run for school board this past year? Uh, so my dad passed away on January 6th. Um, I'd actually talked to Caitlin a little bit about what being on the school board was like. And then the, the Monday, I actually was looking into it and the Monday after it was due to, to run for election was when I checked into what the last date was. And I, at that time I thought it was, you know, you know, things happen for a reason that maybe I shouldn't run. And then this position came open and I was like, well, maybe I should be doing this and it would be great. It's a new year, a new district. Um, I want to try to give them as much help to get this started in the right way as I can with the experience that I have. So that's important to me. Plus, I want to be able to tell my mom that I'm using my degrees for a reason. She always asks, what do you have all these degrees for? So 
Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Carl, for that. Um, next is over to Megan. Hi. Um, so my name is Meg Marley. I'm a um, parent in town. Uh, my husband and I have lived here for 13 years. Uh, we both grew up in Derry, so we're also uh, community members, surrounding community members. We have three children in the school system and um, I'm a former high school teacher, so I'm, I'm connected to education as well, like Carl. I've been out of the classroom for quite some time, but I, I work locally with community um, as a yoga instructor. I um, wanted to get involved with the school board this year after the pandemic because um, I really wanted to just advocate for my kids' education in this town and for, for my friends' kids and, and the community's kids. Um, I wanted to see, you know, a little bit more transparency as to some of the decision making that had gone down, and um, you know, I wanted to see see the kids prioritize. So I um, wanted to to be part of that because you can sit back and you can make comments on Facebook and you can be frustrated, or you can get involved and you can try to make positive changes that you believe in and that you stand up for. So um, I'm not going to go too far in because I, I did. Do candidate night and I think a lot of people know some of my positions um, but I, I will read my my letter of interest to you guys and I appreciate the opportunity to speak um, for all of you tonight so thank you for that um, I'm writing this letter to express interest in the board position that most recently became available with the vacancy um, of Jim Sweeney um, I would love the opportunity to be able to serve the community and the children of our town in this role. And I hope with the initiation and the uh, support that I got in the most recent election that I would be considered for the position. Um, my professional background is in science education and I worked at Timberlane High School. So I was part of the, the larger district before it was separated. I think my experiences um, would bring valuable perspective to the board. My time working with the public schools allowed me to develop an understanding of the system and the complex issues that schools, students, and faculty face um, because I was faculty. Um, so I get the perspective of the teacher very much so and I, and I, and I consider myself a teacher. Um, as a board member, I would work co cooperatively with fellow board members and approach all aspects of the position in a professional manner, keeping the children of our town in the forefront of all my decision making. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's where I stand, yeah. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Yep. And then, uh, Caitlin. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, good evening. My name is Caitlin Parnell. Um, I have served on the board previously, but I want to do a quick introduction. Um, I grew up in Hampstead. I came back to raise my kids. We've been here about 13 years at this point. Um, I have three children. Um, one at Pinkerton, who's about to graduate. I have an eighth grader, and then I have a sixth grader. Um, my work background is in project management and business development. So that's kind of the uh, summary of what I do outside of um, volunteering. Um, I think most people know that I previously served on the school board. Um, I was on the board for four years. Prior to being elected, I was a volunteer in the schools um, while my kids were there. And additionally, I was a grassroots organizer for the central school renovations that we all know we've been trying to get past for so long. Um, while I did not intend to pursue a return to the board, um, the resignation of a senior member of the school board is what um, I saw as an opportunity to be helpful to, to the school district um, and the town in a continued capacity. The makeup of the current board I viewed as very strong and united and one that I would be honored to serve with. Um, my goal from the beginning of my school board tenure four years ago has always been to serve the town, the district, the schools, and public education in general. Um, all of those things need to come together to serve our kids. So that is what we need to focus on and what my focus has always been on. Um, that drive um, has not changed over the years. Um, I have no agenda walking into this at this point. Um, as the district moves towards both increased in-person learning, which I'm thrilled that this board was able to get moving, 
Um, and then additionally, with our future as a single district SAU, I'd like to continue to be able to, to support those changes, which I view as really um, positive um, things for our district. Um, I have had the honor of serving with three of the current board members in the past, um, and I believe I've cultivated a positive relationship with the school board as a whole. Um, in addition, one of the things that I feel like I can bring to this um, position for this coming year is I have a really strong relationship with staff um, and teachers in the schools. Um, obviously, when you're in the position of being on the school board, you get to work with people in a capacity that you never expected. And I have the utmost respect for our district staff. And um, I think that's an asset of mine that I have a strong relationship with them. And as we're moving through a year that's going to continue to have a lot of change with a new administration and a single district SAU, I think that could be um, a real asset as we move forward. Um, like Carl, I participated in the superintendent search. Um, so I am already familiar with our um, incoming superintendent, Mr. Thompson. I feel like he is gonna do great things for our district. And my basic goal um, in putting in a letter of interest was to support the board, support the district and help in any way I can over the next year to make us really, really successful in our first year as a single district SAU and get us back on the path that got disrupted um, by the pandemic and, and what education has had to be like for the last year. So um, that's about it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Caitlin. Um, thank you all for your introductions. Uh, we're gonna move into, uh, I'll tell you, it's a series of five questions. Every board member will have uh, the opportunity to ask a question and we'll um, also allocate what order for the candidates to answer. Um, so the first question up is uh, from um, Aaron. So Aaron, do you wanna? Okay, my first question is for, um, am I supposed to say their first names or <laughs> Ms. Marley? <laughs> um, do you have a goal or goals for the school board moving forward? Yes. Um, so other than obviously reopening what you guys have achieved and that was moving in the right direction. Um, I would like to provide the community with more transparency on decision-making um, and, and be an open communication between concerned taxpayers or parents and, and the board, just like I think all the current board members um, feel that way right now. Um, I'm sorry, hold on one second. So um, I think that is important as our schools are tax funded and we are a small involved community that, that we do open up that transparency. Um, I hope to be an active member in conversations going on between both parties. Um, I was pushing for the renovations for the school for two and four, and I know there are ongoing building issues. So I wanna prioritize staff concerns um, for, for building situations, health and safety for the kids and for, for the adults. As a former teacher that worked in a building in the district that's old, there were water concerns, there's air quality concerns, and, and those are things that, that do stay on your mind. So, so those are things that I, I wanna work with the, the board and the community to get done. Um, and, and just you know supporting the kids as we move forward after the pandemic maybe providing, you know, working with the, the group to come up with solutions for providing evaluations and support going forward to get them caught up, to feel, let them feel supported if they need um, social therapies or anything else, we're gonna have all kinds of, of issues as we move forward. So um, those are some of my, my priorities. Yeah. Anything else? If you're good, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I am going to ask the same question and this time to Carl, I'll repeat the question. Uh, Carl, do you have a goal or goals for the school board moving forward? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Um, so, I guess the first thing is in my leadership program, they talk a lot about serving leadership. I don't know the district well enough to necessarily have a goal yet. 
I also think it's important to talk with the other school board members that have been around for the last three, four, five years, know what they, they're thinking, um, and try to do that to work with the people that are in the district that I've met to get a better feel for it. Uh, things that I've thought about uh, is kind of long-term financial planning uh, to kind of give clarity and try to look at look ahead. Um, in one of the school board meetings from a year ago, I think David was talking about what are previous uh, five-year trends and looking at where uh, overages are happening, where uh, things are under, and then can we look at where future retirements are going to come from and try to model what that will look like? And I think that would be really helpful for taxpayers too, because I think one of the issues is not, you know, what are we going to pay, but knowing what we're going to pay ahead of time so that when all of a sudden the tax rates go up, we know why the tax rates are going up and they know ahead of time. And I think that might be helpful to, to pass things. Uh, Megan just had a really good point talking about socio emotional stuff. These kids are coming back to school. For me, going back to school, even after six weeks when um, we were out at my district and just going hybrid made me nervous and just trying to help these kids reassociate in the short term. I think that's that like looking into the best way to do that and what literature says around could be helpful as well. But again, it's more what what does the district need? I don't know yet, but that's why I want to get involved just to find out and try to enable the district to succeed. Okay, great. Um, okay, so the um, next is obviously Caitlin. Um, and it's the same question. Uh, do you have a goal or goals for the school board moving forward? Thank you, Erin. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is as a board bringing the focus back to our school community as a whole. Um, everything has been so disjointed and to some extent crisis management over the past year to even 18 months. Um, I would love to see the board focus on our school community, but that just doesn't mean you know, our, each of our separate buildings. It, it means our students, it means our teachers, our administrators, our volunteers who haven't, who are such a huge part of the school community who, you know, we haven't had that connection. They haven't been able to have that connection this year. Um, so I think it's, you know, a joint overarching goal that, that could be um, put in place about bringing our community back together. Um, as, as a big goal, and that's somewhat general, um, but I feel like that really is important and also speaks to um, what Ms. Marley spoke to, what um, Mr. Hubner spoke to about transparency, making sure everybody feels like they are part of the discussion and our understanding of everything that's going on, whether it's financial or um, social, emotional, anything like that, that that, that there's better communication as a whole. Um, and I realize that, that that is an important piece of this and it is something that needs to happen. So that would be my goal going forward. Okay, great. That's, um, that's all, I don't have any further questions on that unless any of you guys do. Nope. Good. Thank you so much. I'm gonna turn this over to Jay. He's got a couple questions for you all. Yeah, we'll start off with the first question and Kyle, we'll go uh, your direction first on this one. Um, what particular skills, qualities and behaviors do you exhibit that will help you succeed as a board member? Uh, I think the biggest one is I, I, I tend to be a very positive energy voice person. Like I'm a little loud. <laughs> uh, Melissa and Caitlin know that for the and Megan know that for the super dedicated committee. <laughs> Like, I want to go around, I want to talk to people. Um, and I think that's talking about coming back to school and getting the community back together, like getting to know the teachers, getting to know the staff, uh, the custodians, uh, stuff like that. It was a really good moment. Carolyn was signing with one of the custodians at Hampton Central School during one of the things. So like that, that like soft touch and just getting to know as many people in the district as possible and getting a feel so they're comfortable talking to you, I think. Sometimes the school board is a really scary thing and people don't want to talk to them. If you're, you just want to, you want them out so you can just do your job. And I, I would like to be a member of the, the 
the board that people are comfortable to, to do. Um, uh, skills, I mean, I have a lot of experience in education. I have two masters. I'm working on my doctorate. I know a lot about curriculum. I know um, a lot about leadership, educational finance, and stuff like that. I will be honest, I don't know a ton about K-8 learning, but I think that's not as important because I'm not going to know as much as the district is anyways. But I can, with my educational experience, maybe ask questions that board members that don't have as much educational experience uh, have to kind of tweak or, or clarify conversations. Um, because this thing called edge speak, basically, like when people are talking about UVD or a gazillion other things that can be helpful. So, uh, yeah, I really, I really want to be somebody that kind of enables conversations to, to do more. Like I'm a Socratic method guy in social studies to ask more questions. And I love, I'm, I'm an education nerd. I love talking this stuff and I'll just talk it all day with whoever will talk with me. So, I mean, that's, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. This is going to be fun for me. I don't know if it would be fun for most people. So. All right, thank you. Awesome, thank you, Carl. Um, Caitlin, we'll go your direction this time. Uh, same question. What particular skills, qualities, and behaviors do you exhibit that will help you succeed as a board member? Thanks, Jay. Um, so, I'm not gonna lie, I think we have a little bit of an advantage when we go second or third. We have like a split second to think about this, so. Um, if I'm looking down, it's because I took some notes so I don't forget stuff. Um, I think I'm good at making connections. I think that I, hand in hand with that, am a good listener. Um, ultimately, I wanna hear what the full information that's being brought to me, I wanna hear others' opinions. Um, and I have found through my working life, through my volunteer life, through um, my previous board life that I do feel like I'm good at making connections and that I'm good working with other people. I think ultimately I am a team player and that's um, a huge part of me. Um, I'm also good at knowing what I don't know. I know that I'm not an expert, especially in education. Um, I do believe we have to listen to our experts um, and that that means um, listening to board members who have more experience in certain areas. It means listening to our teachers, listening to our administrators when they bring things to us um, and really trying to grasp all of the information and asking questions if we don't understand. Um, and I think that is something that I'm good at doing um, and that I'm good at um, understanding when I'm not the expert. Um, and then lastly, I think another quality that I have kind of goes back to the team player piece. I am, I view myself as a supporter. I'm not somebody who loves being like out the face of something. Um, I wanna make sure that everybody around me is succeeding um, and I'll do what I need to do to, to make that happen um, to the best of my ability. So that's it. Awesome, thank you. And last but not least on this question, Meg, uh, just one more time. What yep. particular skills, qualities, and behaviors do you exhibit that will help you succeed as a board member? All right. So um, aside from my, my background as a teacher, I am passionate about education and learning. So I, I want to bring that mindset to the board. Um, you know, the best education we can, the most, you know, fiscally responsible education we can. Um, my teaching experience includes working with uh, other teachers and PLCs working in student teacher groups. Um, I always had great rapport with teachers and staff at Timberland Regional High School. I do enjoy leadership roles, to be honest with you. Um, I've always, I seek them out kind of, I, like at my current job, I, I'm, I serve as a leader. Um, I, I do consider myself a team player. Um, again, I, I don't consider myself a know-it-all. I am open and honest about my beliefs, so I do like to share them and be part of a conversation but I can be swayed and, and um, I like working with a team and compromising as well. So that's important to me. Um, yeah, so those are some of the things, you know, I like to, as I've, as I've become more, you know, conscientious about um, 
you know, my yoga and stuff, I do like to be a little bit more observant and a little bit better listening before I react. And I think that that's a good quality as well to bring to the board. Great. Thank you very much, all three of you for that. Uh, we're going to go on to the next question very quickly here. Uh, Caitlin, we'll start off with you this time because, you know, you had the advantage the last time, like you said. Uh, so question number three for everyone. Have you been a part of any town slash community or school district organizations in the past? And how have those roles prepared you for this role? Okay, thanks again, Jay. Um, so I mentioned in my um, introduction, I did volunteering in the schools. Um, I was part of, I'm gonna say the predecessor to the current um, grassroots renovation um, effort um, several years ago about trying to get the central school renovations passed. Um, and I, I did have a leadership role there with trying to organize that. And as you all know, how much work that takes to try to get people turned out to the polls. Um, I actually had the opportunity to work with Aaron. Um, we partnered at one point with PTSA. Um, there was a lot going on there to try to, a huge push to try to get uh, the renovations passed. Um, additionally, prior to serving on the school board, I served on the rec commission, um, which I also think should maybe start being called like prep for school board because we've got a couple members who have gone through that. Um, and that, that was my first organized um, town organization as far as a board that I served on. It was hugely eye-opening, the amount of work that goes into a volunteer position on a town or a school board. Um, but it's also a great way to really see how this town ticks and how much these organizations put into making things successful. You know, primarily I've been involved with things with kids, but with the rec department, you had multitudes of people um, across the spectrum who were helped out by rec and who had activities brought forward and, and successfully um, put together um, and beyond maintaining town fields continuously and everything else. So. Um, that's, I think that's pretty much everything that I have served on. Great. Thank you. Uh, Megan, over to you on this one. Uh, how have you been, have you been part of any town community or school district organizations in the past and how have they prepped you for this role? So I have not been a part of any, um, unofficial or, you know, any town committees other than my classroom teaching experience. Um, where, where we formed many multiple committees within the school for various tasks. Um, I also served as a club leader and a class advisor during that time. And I, and I consider teaching as a public servant job. You know what I mean? It's, it's definitely a lot of dedication and, and, and not always a lot of pay. So um, lots of out, outside hours on that, you know, dances and clubs and, and kids. I did graduate work in education and teacher administration at UNH, which I think, you know, had given me during my time teaching a little bit of an outside perspective of the system, which I thought very valuable, um, you know, as a taxpayer view and as, you know, that, that leadership view as I was training to become an administrator before um, I decided to leave the profession for my family purposes. Other things that I think are, you know, local um, things. I own and operate a small business with my husband. So we work within the community um, quite a bit with customers and clients. Um, we provide fiscal support. I can't say that I do a whole lot of volunteering. I, I've done some at um, St. Anne's fiscal support to baseball and, and, and that kind of stuff through our business. And some of the other ways I've served the community include um, yoga for recovering addicts and uh, yoga for kids. But I think, you know, my classroom experience would be most valuable as, as a board member um, in this application and um, that extra, you know, education and learning about the system and yeah thank you <laughs> awesome thank you uh and carl last but not least over to you uh same question have you been a part of any town community or school district organizations in the past and how have they prepped you for this role so uh when i was young and like to run in burning buildings i was at the hampton fire department for a while until i blew up my knee uh I, don't, I got older, I don't know if I got smarter, but um, I've been a coach. Uh, I did extracurricular, like I did extracurriculars. I ran a youth and government program. 
So I'm fit, I know Robert's Rules of Order pretty well. Uh, I was actually a class advisor and I planned a prom, if you could believe it, which was based around the Yule Ball for Harry Potter. Yeah, because I'm a total nerd. Um, as far as leadership positions in districts go, uh, when I was in Franklin, they were rewriting the curricular map and I got involved in that because I was one of the more experienced educators. They have a hard time keeping educators because they just don't have the money to, to pay them. Uh, and it was based off competency education. So we had to try to implement that across the entire school district, which meant a lot of selling things to people that don't necessarily want to change um, over time. And I mean, I think the biggest thing about working, I've worked in multiple different school districts, whether it's Manchester or Franklin, or I worked in a private, private school in Concord, uh, understanding the difference between how involvement by the community matters. When you work in uh, more affluent communities that have the ability to, to help out, it makes everybody's life easier in the school district. And you just want to keep tapping that and keep bringing them in and make them feel like they're doing something. And then, and then it, it makes life easier, especially consider when you're in a district that can't quite do that those singular people that make just make a difference um, really matter as well. So it's about, you know, forming those community bonds and keeping the tradition in Hampstead going of, you know, my mom used to volunteer at the town hall like 35 years ago, and, like awesome things like that. So thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Dave. Yep. So uh, the next question is coming from me this time. So uh, this First question uh, that I'm asking here is going to go to Megan. So Megan, um, this year we're going to be working on strategic plan. It's one of the bigger goals for the school board. So the question is, with this year that we're going to be creating that uh, SA, now our own SAU strategic plan, what do you bring to the table to help support the board to create the best possible strategic plan? Um, well, understanding of the school system. Familiarity with the um, SAU 55. I was part of that that SAU, so I've kind of seen it, its evolution over the past ten years or so. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd like to be involved with it any way possible as a board member, whether it be like looking at different locations for office if that's not set up yet or being involved with committees for, for hiring different positions that are remaining. Um, and, and then and prioritizing, I'm sure you have, are gonna set up new um, mission statements and maybe some educational outcomes and goals for the, for the kids. That'd be something I'd be interested in, in contributing to as well. Okay. Yeah, so just creating kind of like this new, this new, system and, and Hampstead schools have always had a great reputation. What has happened over the last year um, has been challenging, but as our own independent freestanding district, I think we will have, you know, a little bit more power to, to come across as, as we are, you know, to, to make our statements um, powerful in the community and, and for the kids unified, you know? Okay. All right. Anything else, Megan? You good? I think I'm good. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Um, thank you, Megan. Uh, next one will be for uh, Carl. So same question to you, Carl, that this year uh, we need to create the new uh, strategic plan. It's up to do that um, this year. And what do you bring to the table to help support the board to create the best possible strategic plan? So I think for that, it's going to be about having contacts and knowing, knowing a whole bunch of different people. Uh, knowing superintendents, former superintendents that have put those things into place. Uh, a biggest thing for me is a lot of people and a lot of businesses create a strategic plan. It's awesome. It looks great on paper. You put it in a binder and it goes on a shelf. Nobody ever sees it again. And then five years later, you look at it and see if you actually got it done. Uh, I think there should be some sort of uh, method or for an iterative process to re-examine and refocus to make sure things actually get done. Every teacher hates the new one year plan and the new initiative every year because there's almost usually an initiative every single year that never gets followed through on. And I would want to make sure that whatever we put in place, something gets done with it so that work actually matters. Even if we end up pivoting and going somewhere else that we get, we do get something done. Uh, but as far as creating it, 
I want to, again, servant leadership is about, you want to listen to as many stakeholders as you can, get the information you can. For me, I'd want to then crunch the numbers and do that analysis. You know, we think we need to improve on math. Like we, math scores have been slipping. Well, let's look at, have math scores actually been slipping. Let's look through the last 10 years and see what then, how much money it would cost to initially raise math scores. And then what's the best research on how to, how to do that. And I know the superintendent's gonna gonna be doing that too, but like this is what I do. I love it. I geek out to it. So I'm gonna really enjoy like if you guys give me something, it will be like, so what do you think about this? I'll be like, oh, I'll just go run off and all sort of stuff. But I didn't know Googling was a skill until I got into graduate school. But um, yeah, so that's kind of how I wanna uh, tackle the strategic plan. Thank you. All right, thanks, Carl. Uh, last but not least, Caitlin. Thanks, David. Um, so I would say what I bring to the development of a strategic plan is the historical knowledge of the past several years. Um, I think when we're looking towards the future, you have to look at what has been done in the past on a positive and a negative. Um, you know, being able to take what has worked in the last five years to impact how we can make things successful within a strategic plan going forward, I think is really important. And also to look at things that have not been successful. Um, there are certainly initiatives every year that, that you, know, you try to get moving and for reasons that can likely be specific to the town and to the district itself, they aren't successful. Whether that's because you don't get buy-in from all the stakeholders or because you know what, it worked in this other district, but. It, it doesn't work for the setup of our schools, for the setup of um, our teachers and our students. So um, I think that historic knowledge, even being able to say like, okay, yeah, this looked really great in public, but like behind the scenes, this wasn't successful and we didn't get that buy-in. I think that is important. You have to be able to use the historical context to make the future into something better and smoother and more successful overall. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Last question will be asked from Megan. Megan Malcolm, that is. Sorry, just writing my last word. Um, okay, so this question, I'll first ask it to Carl. Um, from your perspective, so there's two parts. Um, from your perspective, what has the district done well over the last year? And what is an area of improvement you are looking to change? Um, so, I mean, the last year really was coronavirus, and I, th I agreed with pushing back, not going to school right away. Uh, I wanted to see, like, for me, if, if my kid was going to go back into school, I would want to have some evidence. And I mean, I was in school, my school went back as hybrid. Uh, I thought that was smart. I did think the district took a little bit too long to come back. I didn't think the plan was quite in place soon enough. And I thought good teaching is stealing. And I thought the district could have had more contacts, talked to more other people, stolen more plans, figured out what's going on to try to have, you know, a better, a better plan in place to get back a little sooner, maybe a month. But honestly, when this whole thing happened, my, my first reaction was, thank God I'm not on the school board they're making such tough decision. And I had a really hard time with people that were, like Megan was talking about, it, you, if you're gonna criticize, you have to be able to willing to pitch in. And the longer things went and the more things happened at my school, the more I wanted to pitch in and the more I realized how important it was and you know, could I lend a hand to this? And I thought that the district in the end did what was best for the kids. And that's really what matters is did you protect the kids? Are you trying to do what's best? Are you trying to maintain the district as best you can? Um, but all that is what has been, what's going well in the past year. I mean, the last past year is hopefully knock on wood, coronavirus is gonna be, you know, be passed by the time we hit the next school year. So the question is, what are you going to do next year? And I keep going back to this on the idea is you, you have to talk to as many stakeholders as possible. You have to find out what you need to do and you have to put the best plan, uh, plans in place. Uh, how do we 
how do we account for rising numbers in the district? How do we get creative with things that we can do? Um, can you move the kids around? Is it possible to move kids from school to school? Asking whole sort of, all sorts of lots of stupid questions, regardless if you sound stupid, to try to get an iterative process to get going. Uh, I do think that the board handled itself well in trying to be responsive and trying to answer questions when the community was, you couldn't please anyone. So I thought that was really good. And I'm ready to get slinged and arrowed as much as you guys are, because I think that's how you do it is you, if you put yourself out there and you communicate with the, with the community well, then, you know, I, they might not agree with you, but at least they understand your reasoning. And I think that's super important. I have no idea if I answered the question. I kind of wanted it there, but thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, so then, um, Caitlin, the same question. Um, from your perspective, what has the district done uh, well over the last year? And what is an area of improvement you're looking to change? Thanks, Megan. Um, I'm going to start with what I think needs to change. Um, communication needs to improve. That's actually been a long theme that there's tried to be continued improvement on. Um, I think there were too many times this year that parents didn't know or didn't feel like they knew what was going on. Um, I think there were even times that staff didn't feel like they knew what was going on or what the next step was gonna be. So I think that's a huge piece that needs to change. There's, that being said, there was probably more communication this year than you've ever had, but in the situation we were in, it didn't meet the needs. It, we needed more communication as a whole. Um, additionally, and this was touched on before, is I think the level of change needs to change. I'm sorry, the level of trust needs to change. Um, again, this situation that we've been in the last year, nobody could have anticipated it. There were, I, I will continue to, from my viewpoint, see that decisions were made with the information that was had at the time, but that information should have been put out more to create more trust. In a situation where everyone was fearful of, to varying degrees as we went through the past year. And there was just so much uncertainty, the trust wasn't there and that caused additional issues. Um, and it made it more difficult for all of the members of the school community. So I think trust needs to be rebuilt. Um, that probably goes hand in hand with communication. Um, so those are the two things that I would wanna see change. Um, as far as what I think was done well this year by the district, I think the physical safety measures that we put in place, that the district put in place um, in the schools when we have been in person um, have been really effective. We have not had clusters. We have not had outbreaks attached to the schools. Um, and I think that's really important this past year. Um, I think bringing forward the renovations was a really good idea. I know that they didn't all fully pass this year, but you know, it was a hard decision to be made across the district of whether you put forward renovations in a year like this. And I think, you know, a ton of that work was done by two of our board members and by incredible volunteers who spent, I don't even want to know how many hours working on that. But um, I think that was something that was done well. It was important. It showed that it needed to be done. And then finally, I think what was done well was um, our process put in place for um, picking a new superintendent. I think um, a lot of stakeholders were involved in that and I think it was done well. I think it was done in the right way. Um, and I think that was successful. So that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. And then Megan, um, from your perspective, what has the district done well over the last year and what is an area of improvement that you're looking to change? Um, from the positive perspectives, I would say the dedication of the board members to see through the entire year, including Mr. Sweeney, um, in a time that is like, super challenging and knowing that all the um, board members at that time were were asked to do a, lots of additional hours of time to, to make that happen. So I think that was, as much as people didn't always agree with the decisions that were made, the effort there is, is, is mighty respectable. Um, I think that the teachers' positivity as a district, you know, not just board, as a district, what it did well was the teachers 
positivity and um, encouragement for the students. Their, their big love coming out, Hampstead teachers, um, making the kids feel connected to their classmates, rocking in-person in learning, rocking the, um, the remote learning as much as you know, we, we know that that's a challenging thing to do. I think that um, I agree with the people on the board making decisions that they thought in their own heart were the best choices to be made at the time based on the availability of information um, with considerations to health and safety. So, so those are some of the things that I thought positive. One simple um, logistical thing that I had as an example when I was asked this previously was the decision to go remote after the holidays. I had a really disagreed with that as I promote in-person learning, but um, that was a really high level of infection time. And I think that ended up being a really good choice by the board um, to do that because even at the, the studio, we were getting tons and tons of cases during that time. So that was smart and, and kept everybody safe. So some of the decisions I did not agree with, um, clearly uh, for those who know me was the start of the school remote. I believe we lost a lot of hours of, of quality instruction time then when, when we had really low cases in town. And we did see that those cases spike through the late fall um, and into the winter. But in, in, the, in August, when we were to open, if we could have opened on time, we had zero to four cases. It would have been great to get the kids connected with their community. So that was something that, that I do wish went differently. Um, another thing was, again, transparency, communication. Um, a specific example was um, maintaining secrecy of the task force when you saw many towns were publicly posting a uh, return to school plan, they would list their task force members and, and some of their qualifications, whether they were a teacher or a doctor or a nurse or you know, some other kind of, of community member. So I, I do also agree with Caitlin that the, the listening of, of the public and getting that committee together for the superintendent was fabulous and, and supportful and um, went really, really awesome. So I appreciate that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you all for this. You know, the questions, the answering the questions, just having a good dialogue right there. Um, at this point, we're going to allow two to three minutes uh, per person to um, give closing remarks. We'll go in the opposite order that we started with. So uh, we'll finish, we'll start uh, with Caitlin, then to Megan, then to Carl. So, Caitlin. Um. I think I just want to say I thank the board for putting together a process like this. I think it it's comprehensive. I think it gives um, everybody a chance to really get to know um, your candidates. Um, I, I don't really have a whole lot else to say. I think you guys asked great questions. So anything that I may have thrown in there um, has pretty much been covered. Um, and I think you have a hard choice of, in front of you. And I think that's a good thing. Thank you, Kim. Uh, turn it over, Megan. Um, I just wanted to, again, say thank you for the opportunity to speak again um, to the community. I have learned an awful lot through running for school board, um, which I, I hope to continue you know, working in community, in community service. I really enjoyed the process. I learned a lot. I learned some things I'd like to do differently. I want to thank the community that supported me um, and that came out and voted for me a couple weeks ago. And, and I want to thank all the board members for all the work they're doing for our kids and, and hope that I can contribute in some way to this process. So thank you. Thank you, Megan. Um, lastly, Carl. Uh, I really appreciate that you guys step up and keep stay on the school board and keep fighting because it's ridiculously hard. And a year ago, I don't think I would have ever wanted to be on the school board. Um, but I definitely, with my dissertation finished, I want to continue that work. I want to continue helping and aiding the board. Um, you know, none of us, no matter who gets it, we're not going to be, have been elected. We're going to have been selected and that, that's a big difference. So for me, it's about trying to work with the consensus of the school board. And once I have some sort of moral ethical issue that uh, goes with, um, and normally consensus, if you, if you look past pre-corona times, usually the board is pretty, uh, has a lot of consensus and able to make it fairly easy. Plus, if we have that next issue uh, that puts us in peril or makes us have to make really hard decisions quickly, I have a lot of contacts around the state that I can, you know, talk with and work with to see what other people are doing to try to make the best decision possible. 
to put the plan in place quickly. Um, but honestly, all of it comes down to, you know, one of, when I was in leadership training, there was a principal for 28 years. He said, when in doubt, what's best for the kids? I got into education because I love teaching kids. I love seeing their eyes, you know, light up when they get this learning experience. I love, you know, making those connections and, and making the world a better place through that next generation that can be better than we were. Like, I, I have my, my last advisor that I had at my old school, they gave me a picture and like, I keep it on my desk because like, that's why I do what I do. Like I got into educational finance to try to get that school district more money and more effective money to make their lives better. So, you know, that's who I, who I am and that's, you know, why I want to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, very much. Um, all right, so at this time, um, you know, I just want to say thank you to the three candidates that have uh, stepped forward. It's, uh, you know, never easy. So we appreciate you putting your names forward, having this discussion for the last hour. Um, at this time, we'll uh, be, you know, dismissing the candidates. Uh, we will be going into a non-public, so I'll be looking for a motion in a moment. Um, don't know how long this will take. We have not talked about the members who have uh, put their names forward, so we're going to have our first discussions right now. And you know, this could take ten minutes. It could take an hour. Um, you know, so we will come out of non-public um, after speaking about the candidates, and we will um, at that point look to nominate uh, somebody to join us as the fifth member. So um, thank you very much again to Megan, Caitlin, and Carl, and we will be back in a little while. I'm going to look for a motion for somebody to motion to go to non-public under RSA 91-A32C. I'll make the motion to go into non-public. Right. No second. Thank you, Jay. So Aaron and Jay. Uh, Melissa, will you mind doing the roll call? Yard? Yes. Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Pellegrini? Yes. And Mr. Smith? Yes. Okay, thank you. The time is 7.58. You're all set. All right. All right. So we have now um, come out of non-public and we are going to be looking for a motion for a candidate to fill the fifth uh, board member slot from now until um, March voting of 2022. Is there anybody who wants to make a motion? I'll go ahead. Um, I'd like to make the motion that we appoint um, Mrs. Caitlin Parnell to be the fifth member of our board until the March election in 2022. And uh, is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? You, uh, I'll just bring up that this was a very tough discussion as uh, I think we've been in there just under an hour. Um, each person that we've talked to, we appreciate each candidate, each person has stepped up with the courage to put their name forward. Uh, we appreciate. Um, we really hope that for anyone that's not selected, that they will continue to advocate for the schools and be part of um, any and all committees that we have coming up. Namely, we have the strategic plan we'll be working on where we will be looking for community involvement and we welcome and implore uh, the the members that have come tonight to be part of that um, as that will be a community event um, like no other let's just say um, so with that uh, Melissa will you take the roll call Mr. Giard yes um, and I'm voting in this because of the past experience that Caitlin brings to the board um, the transition for the next year is going to be a difficult one, bringing in the new superintendent. And I do believe that Caitlin's past history uh, and her expertise and her experience is going to be an asset to the board as well as the superintendent as we form our own SAU. Ms. Malcolm. Yes. And I'm voting yes. Um, 
because of Caitlin's prior board experience and her familiarity with the school district. I feel it will be a valuable asset to, um, to the board given the upcoming year of change. Um, you know, the historical knowledge she brings to the table behind the SAU, um, SAU 55, and the established working relationships we all have with her. Um, she's really proven to be a committed and collaborative team player. Mrs. Pellegrini. Um, I'm voting yes as well. Um, my choice for Ms. Parnell is based off the experience and history she has with the school board and the SAU, uh, specifically as it relates to the matter of the SAU split. Uh, which I think will be invaluable to the board and community during this um, year of change that we have ahead of us. Mr. Smith? Um, yes, I'm voting yes. And a few reasons why that I think are very worth noting. Uh, Caitlin was, a, would say, a powerful force in the uh, SAU separation to date. For those that don't know, her and I worked together on um, with our legal team to negotiate various aspects of the separation and as close in familiarity she has with the gaps and the risk i think her her knowledge to help in the town fiscally is immeasurable um she's also done a really great job with the superintendent search and other matters of this transition uh for those that don't know uh i actually started working with caitlin on a, you know how to develop a plan to bring the kids back starting in February. So while this board here has been able to take the credit, um, Caitlin definitely was uh, a major force in helping us and guide us there uh, so that we were able to do this quickly as the board came up to speed in March. Um, I also know that bringing her up to speed on issues and any, um, any events that are going on right now that we're facing will not be an issue. We'll be able to, she'll be able to get right back in the saddle very quickly. She knows that I'll be calling her tomorrow morning once she's sworn in um, and she'll know what's going on. We won't skip a beat. Uh, again, the strategic plan is something that we're going to be focusing on this coming year and having her expertise over the last four years where all other board members are here, have been here two years or less um, is going to be invaluable. And lastly, you know, just uh, what I really appreciate about working with Caitlin is, you know, we didn't always get along. We didn't always see eye to eye, but whenever we opposed, we always had respectful, thoughtful discussions. We know that we could come back to the next discussion and it's just like it was before, just, okay, what's next? We're in this for the kids. We're in this for the community. Um, and I always appreciated her emotional intelligence with every discussion, every decision and follow-up discussions uh, where she was always thinking forward and not thinking behind. So for those reasons, I'm voting yes. Okay, uh, thank you for that. We have four votes in favor to appoint Caitlin Parnell to fill the vacancy for school board until next March. Thank you. So uh, with that, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. With our second. Second. And Melissa, you might call the roll call. Sure, Mr. Giard? Yes. Ms. Malcolm? Yes. Mrs. Pellegrini? Yes. And Mr. Smith? Yes. Okay, thank you, motion carries, it's nine o'clock. Thank you all, good night. Thank you, good night.